Each bottle is from Catalonia, where the majority of Carver is produced. And we're told they all look different. I'm this not very is, good at this. again, this is a relatively similar colour to the other ones. <laughs> it's different from the other. It is more <laughs> similar than different, I'd say, though. Five glasses in, we approach the nuances of Carver tasting technique. Me, I was uh, like more than one year to know how to do this. You did this every morning for a year? Yes. <laughs> did you get a lot done that year? Is that what's referred to you as your lost year? <laughs> that like John Lennon in New York. And then, in a ringing endorsement of the Carver tasting process, Cathy erupts with joy. Pally's having a, uh, a small aneurysm here. All, all I know is, say I had a sip of this, and then an hour later, someone switched glasses in this episode of Columbo that I'm in, I wouldn't go, what, what's happened? This is a completely different drink. To, I mean, I, but as I say, I have no power. <laughs> OK, I've got a bit of uh, brain here. Let me know how that is. Bon appetit. That face tells me you made the wrong decision. It is slightly disconcerting that the mouth is open. It's as if the mouth of this sheep is going, oh, come on. Yeah. Tell me what you've gained from this experience. An anecdote? I've got an anecdote. I was with someone stupid enough to eat sheep's brain. <laughs> That's my anecdote. Look, the eye's still in it. This is basically just an autopsy. Don't eat that, OK? I eat the brain, you eat the eyes. I'm not subject to some kind of weird television law of bullying Have where just because Declan has eaten the brain, the ant has to eat the eye. No. Oh, my oh, good grief, okay. it's black inside. Why are you doing this? Why, are you do why did you do that? It's delicious. It's not. It is. Should I get a burger? This is Haukark. Haukark? Yes. And this is Brennewin, but also known as Black Death. Halka, or Greenland shark, is poisonous when fresh owing to high levels of uric acid. But by simply leaving it to decay and hanging it out to ferment for a few months, it becomes technically edible. Why won't this kill me? Um, I'm, I'm not really sure. No, it's just fine. Uh, it's OK. Yeah. OK. But you don't, you won't eat this, will you? No, I no. don't like it. No. <laughs> Thank you. That's a good sign. <laughs> Both those things are awful. Those are two awful things here. <laughs> good. That feels terrible. Oh. I wish I could keep some of it on my spoon, and yeah, it keeps falling off. There we go, here we go. It's fine. Um, <coughs> I'm going to say this is too Turkish. We've, okay. we've gone too far. We've gone too Turkish. This is the... <laughs> that sounds like your safe term. <laughs> too Turkish. In the, in the bedroom, yes. Yeah. That is how my too wife knows we've gone too far. <laughs> Lights on. <laughs> it's become too Turkish. Maybe this can only be truly enjoyed if you've had a certain quantity of racket. I think any food that requires you to be drunk should be reassessed. <laughs> Barcelona FC's greatest kicker of balls is genuinely called Mr. Messi and has a whole area dedicated just to him and how good he's supposedly meant to be. But of more interest to Cathy is the museum's green screen photo studio. I don't care for this team. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why not? I just don't care about football. Just stand next to Messi. OK. Just pretend to know him for the All picture. Right. Just pretend he's your friend. Go on, <laughs> okay. get me. I just need you to put, put this Messi arm Messi. out. Why would... I wouldn't touch Messi. I don't know him. It's inappropriate. Do it. <laughs> Click it. You really want to take this picture this like a, that? This is... I don't want to take the picture at all, but given that the picture's being taken... <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I do now know for certain that I am a vertigo sufferer. Right. What I'm enjoying is the tranquility, the really freaky silence, and then the 
quite violent uh, flame throwing that's going on just inches above our head. Wow, look, you can genuinely see everything. Awkward now, having to stand this close to each other Pretty after that. Cool. I yeah. thought you'd be able to mingle in one of these things and walk yeah. around and chat, but we're actually hemmed it's in not, a quite It's not small... like a function. <laughs> I don't think That's it what is. I thought. You, you I thought you came up here to network? I came here for a party in the sky. Well, it's more like a confessional booth in the sky. Next, a liquefied olive in a semi-solid membrane. I'm not going to lie, I don't know how to eat this. Take the, the glass like this. OK. And you just, you yep. know, yes. like a shot. Yeah. A shot glass of olive. Yeah. OK, you okay. go first, though. Wow, that was wholly unexpected. I'm scared. It is fine. This is why I can't do the jungle. Nat's bollocks and all that. No? There we go. How's that? I don't know whether that's going to hit the top five restaurants in Barcelona, or maybe it is. We could, if we were going to go off-piste culturally, yeah. Yeah. go to Bad Taste Records, yeah. which is the home of the Smekgalesa uh, record label, yes. which is yeah. rare. Um, yeah. Do you think they will laugh if they weren't yeah, laughing I, my joke? I think they're slightly mocking at the unnecessary increase in volume when you go into Icelandic. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah, I mean, they've just, they've just walked out in absolute fury at the desecration of their mother tongue. What do you think for this? That's nice. Look at this. That's, That's lovely. Good. So I will make you this. 1,600 euros. 1,600 euros. Yes. Yeah. Tap in the pen. Tap <sighs> in. My question is, if you go with this, yes. what will be the number that you can afford it? Nine euros, final offer. <laughs> <laughs> 500 euros. It's you killing the prices. 500 euro would have no. to be it. You would have. <laughs> no, it be let's do this. Let's make it 12. 12? Yes. Hey, no, I can't. With credit card. 1,200 euro, no. Yes. No, I could do 800. I could do 800 euro. Really? Yeah. Really? Give you me your hand. Your hand never been there so excited go. in there my life. Oh. Yeah, yes, there you go. 800 euro. 800 euro. Friggin' rug. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've made an unsupervised <laughs> rug purchase. You're out of your debt. Oh. I, I can't even do a Sainsbury shop without running it by. Storytelling is a crucial part of Marrakesh's history, passing on wisdom and moral guidance to new generations. In the 11th century, tellers would perform in the main square, but now a new breed perform in city centre cafes like this. Jewood puts on free performances for tourists in his spare time. Hello. 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 I'm Richard. Hello. Hi. Nice to nice meet, to meet you. you. Hello, I'm Stephen. Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah. So I should say, I have no facial expressions. He doesn't. Virtually none. It's like a medical So condition. you won't be able to tell anything <laughs> from looking at me because I'm emotionally cut off. Yeah. Okay. Like, almost and completely dead. I'll try and make up for it with my... <laughs> Stephen's with, more animated. With warm eyes. <laughs> also, I'm bad with eye contact, so yeah. just bear that in mind. So once upon a time, there was a child. His father died and left him alone. This particular story follows Jaffa, a lazy son of a butcher, whose mother encourages him to seek out his own luck. Jaffa, you fool! You always lose your money. Throughout the tale, Jewood skips between roles like a modern-day Danny Dyer, flitting from dog... Woof, woof! Go away, you stupid! ..to old man. Give me money first. The story has more twists and turns than an episode of Come Dine With Me. And guess what he found? Dead Queen. Not the Sopranos. With new characters constantly appearing. He found a white-bearded wizard holding a candle and a spell book in his hand. Well, we weren't going to guess was... that. But like Oliver Stone before him, Jerwood is keen to explore what moral lessons we've gained from his story. What did you learn from this story? So the moral of the story is always find a tiny wizard to take the punishment for you. Yeah. <laughs> and I suppose in a Bruno Bettelheim way, it's really about integrating various aspects of the ego to create a whole. And that's what I took away. I have no idea what this means. No, I, neither. I didn't really. I just read it in a Sunday yeah. supplement.